Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson I will talk about periodic trends. Actually this will be the first of many lessons about periodic trends. I will break it down into smaller bits. So, what is a periodic trend? So within each period there are trends. such as conductivity, density, melting point, boiling point, etc. So there's four we're going to be looking at. There's the atomic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, and chemical reactivity. So in the next few lessons, I will talk about all of these, but I'll address one per lesson. So today I'm going to talk about the atomic radius. So about the atomic radius. As the number of protons increases, the power of attraction of the nucleus for the electrons increases. It makes sense. The more protons there are, the stronger the attraction will be towards the electrons. Because of that, the atom tends to shrink. All the shells, all the energy levels, tend to come closer to the nucleus because all the electrons want to collapse onto the nucleus. They are attracted to, nu to the nucleus they cannot collapse because they are on energy levels. But that shrinks the atom. It makes the radius decrease. Now, going down a group, because we are increasing the number of shells, actually the radius increases by default. So more orbits, greater uh, radius. So if we look at the, image, the images here to summarize this or to go over this again, we have group number... Uh, two over here, which starts with lithium and ends with neon. So all of these atoms have two energy levels or orbits because they're in group number two. As we are going from left to right, we're adding elect uh, sorry adding protons into the nucleus. So as we increase the number of protons, the nucleus becomes a little bit stronger and attracts the electrons more strongly. So these electrons want to get closer to the nucleus and that's why the radius becomes smaller and smaller. The energy levels shrink, they get closer to the nucleus. So as we go from left to right, the radius decreases. So don't get fooled by this arrow, all it means is that the trend is going from left to right but or the period going from left to right, but the actual trend is that the at atomic radius decreases. Now, if we're going down a group, so this arrow is pointing down, in other words, we're analyzing going downwards. Going downwards for that group, so group number one, um, because they all have one valence electron, right? So for group number one, at the top, there are two shells, then the period below would have three shells, period below would have four shells, and so on and so forth. So logically, as we're adding orbits or energy levels, the atom becomes wider and wider and wider, so the um, atomic radius increases, all right? Now, another way we can look at this, or that you might be asked to um, analyze, is through a graph. Before I talk about the graph, I just wanna show you uh, the general periodic table with the overview of what the trend looks like. So as we said, as we're going down a group, the atoms are getting bigger because we are adding orbits. And as we're going from left to right, the atomic size or radius decreases because the shells or the electrons are attracted to the nucleus so much more because we're adding protons as we go towards the right-hand side. So the biggest atom of the whole periodic table would be at the bottom here because it has the most shells and the less protons within that period. So cesium would be the biggest one. And the smallest one would be actually helium because helium has the least shells, right, in terms of periods. But at the same time, it has more protons than hydrogen, it has one more. So because it has one more, the, the one shell that it has will be just a little bit closer to the nucleus than it would be for hydrogen. Okay, so I was talking about graphs. So sometimes you will be given trends in the form of a graph. 
It could be the atomic radius, it could be something else. You might be asked to analyze the trend and determine what is the trend. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? What is it really doing? So what do you do with a graph like this? So here we can see that on the y-axis we have the atomic radius and on the x-axis we have the atomic number. The first thing you need to do is to draw a line or multiple lines I should say. Okay, so I'm going to put them in red, just make sure, okay. So you are going to locate the first item, the first element of each period. So here I have lithium, I have sodium, I have potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. So I want to draw a line, a straight line, right before lithium. So in other words, between the noble gas and the alkali metal, okay? so. If I do it over here, oh boy, this is a little too wide. <laughs> Let me fix this. Okay, so it should look about like this. So what do we observe here? Well, if I draw an arrow representing what is going on here, I can clearly see that for period two, my trend is going down. Period 3, my trend is going down. Period 4, 5, and so on and so forth. You can see that every time the trend is going down. So for every period, the trend goes down. In other words, this atom has a greater radius than this one. This atom has a greater radius in period 3 than this one. So along a period, the atomic radius tends to decrease. Now, how do I analyze a family? Okay, well, I will circle the first element of the period. Okay, so lithium, maybe I should choose another color, a little bit easier to see. Okay, so lithium over here, as compared to sodium, as compared to potassium, as compared to rubidium, cesium, and francium. So what do we observe here? What is the general trend? Well, we can see that the trend is going essentially upwards. And what if we wanted to analyze instead, um, let me just pick another color. What if we wanted to analyze instead the halogens? So I would be picking fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Um, okay, I'm going to stop there because these get more complicated because now your transition metals are getting mixed in there, but you'll get the general idea. So what can we observe here? Is there an increase or a decrease? Well, clearly we can see that the general trend is going upwards. So if I look at the halogens, they are also going upwards. So it doesn't matter which family you pick, whether it's group number one, the alkali metals, or group number seven, the halogens, you should see the same trend. Do not analyze the noble gases. The noble gases, because they are stable, they have a full octet, sometimes they'll, they'll behave slightly differently. So we leave hydrogen and helium out of the analysis because these are too small and hydrogen we know is a special case, helium is a noble gas, so also a special case. And the noble gases in general, the inner gases are special cases. So we don't analyze these. The easiest is to pay attention to the alkali metals, so very beginning of the period, or the halogens near the end of the period to see what is happening. So in the case of the atomic radius, we can see that along a period, the atomic radius goes down, but along a family, the atomic radius goes up for the reasons that I explained before. So when you get a graph, this is what you do. You separate into the periods, and then you analyze the trend by family, but also by period. I hope this was clear. If you have questions, as usual, leave them in the comments below and I'll uh, make sure to clarify matters. All right, see you around.